theme music. Every good hero should have some. That's right. Every good hero should have some theme music. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Oh, I want to talk about the smooth sounds of Kenny G. Want to talk about the Giants offense. Want, want to talk about... Someone sent me an email today, and I thought it was an interesting email. And and the the breakdown of the email was all the reasons and rationales why the Giants should sign OBJ, even though he's coming off a a torn ACL, which happened in February, and he'll probably be nowhere near ready for the season until maybe the latter half, if even that. But we'll break that down for a second. Evidently, the frustration is starting to show with Kenny G. He's having his issues. He's he's having his problems in camp. He's he's dropping passes. He he's just he's just not the guy that we thought he would. Thought he was. Well, I never thought he was the guy. I always thought he was. Bringing you the smooth sounds of Kenny G. Seventy-two million. Not worth it, as you can plainly see. I figured when we signed him from Detroit, it was a humongous mistake. I made a video the day after we signed him saying it was a humongous mistake. There was multitudes of reasons why. Most of his cut touchdowns have come in two seasons in Detroit. Those were his 2,000-yard seasons. He was playing in the Dome. He was playing with Matthew Stafford. He was playing in an offense that was basically tailored and suited for him at times. But he had injuries. He had the hip pointer his last year, which cost him most of the season. The, the issue with the hip pointer was twofold. One was, like I said, I, I spoke to people in and around Detroit, and some felt that he could come, he could have came back from the hit pointer, but he was saving himself for his contract year, which is which is understandable because you know what, your your uh, an NFL career is very short lived, but th- there was a bad taste in some people's mouths in the organization, and some people in in and around Detroit who were fans of the Lions that he probably could have came back, and then my issue was this: if you have a hit pointer injury and it turns into a degenerative hip injury that you will never be the same again. You will never be that same player. And my thought process was this, and you can go back and watch the video, that if he has this injury and it's truly a hip pointer and he couldn't come back almost the entire season, I believe he played just four games, then that issue could, could, could manifest itself throughout the rest of his career. Because that's one of those injuries you need. The hip is something you need to be extremely careful with ask Bo Jackson Bo Jackson's career ended because of a hip injury and in on in that fateful day in Oakland or was it Los Angeles I don't remember when he actually against the Bengals when he got basically dislocated his hip and popped it back in himself but the production just hasn't been there he started 14 games last year he was targeted only seven to 76 times and he was on a team that 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 needed a big wide receiver. He was on a team that needed someone to take over. He was, he was, he was needed to be the Odell Beckham jr. The go-to guy, the Mark Bavaro, the Jeremy Shockey, the Imani Toomer, the Homer Jones. If you even want to go back further, the Ernest gray, if you want to go back to 84, and we're, we're not going to, we're not going to drop a Tom melody reference. The Lionel Emanuel, I guess in the 85 season, it was, he was going to be the go-to guy. He was going to be the guy that was going to shine. And it just didn't happen. You could say it was the quarterback's fault. You could say it was the offense coordinator's fault. You could say it was the head coach's fault. But sometimes you need to remember, at times when your quarterback is indecisive and not accurate, that's going to affect your wide receivers. Is Was that all of Kenny G's problems? No, Daniel Jones was not all of Kenny G's problems. Uh <laughs> The rib, we, we still talk about the rib injury to this day that the, I don't know how that rib, I don't know how that ridge rib injury happened, but we still talk about it to this day, but can he shrug off a season with 37 catches or 521 yards and no touchdowns is the Dable system going to save both Daniel Jones and Kenny G he's not Stefan Diggs. That's the thing, and th- and that's what some people are like. Well, he's gonna he's going to play the Stephon Diggs role in Buffalo. He's not Stephon Diggs. That's a problem. He still has issues with dropping passes. He's I think at times he still has issues with concentration. And honestly, if you see him move, I do not see the fluidity that he had going in, into early in his career. And that could be one of those things in regards to the hip injury. Now, I know people are going to talk about the fact that he had the second lowest average separation at 1.7 in the NFL last season. And if you break down the next-gen stats, 
He had a 48.4 contested catch rate despite his 6'4 frame size. You, you, you are never going to live and die off of the contested catch. Your career cannot live and die off of that. Why? Because your career will die with that because of the fact that your catch percentage, especially for a wide receiver, should be in somewhere in the 60s. If you're going to have a contested catch percentage, you're probably going to drop down into the 40s. That is not a way to make a career. And I, and I hate the, the average separation of yards at 1.7. So that means he almost has a two-yard cushion off his guy. In the NFL, we've talked about this a million times. The quarterback creates a throwing window. He throws his wide receivers open. That is what, besides the pressure, the average separation yards, in my mind, is one of the least reliable stats in the entire NFL. But the question is, can he come back? Can he shine? I'm never going to say never, but he's already starting to show some frustration at camp. He dropped a couple passes yesterday. He slammed the ball down to the turf. He was ticked off. He says, I was pissed. You know, so, I mean, he goes, I, th- there was a play with the Dory Jackson. He goes, I went down, there was, and I, I went down there and grabbed it, and Dory just came by and made a play and made it into a little fumble. So, yeah, I'm pissed because would have been a big completion for us. Listen, dude, you haven't had back-to-back. You had back-to-back receiving yards of the Lions in 19. You led the NFL, back, back in 19 is when you led the NFL with, 11 touchdowns. But the problem is all your touchdowns have come in really in one season. We've talked about this multitudes of times. He, I, I, I think he is heading down the path of giant busts in reference to free agents. If you take a look at where he's going to be in the amount of money that he got, he, he's heading down, he's heading down that tra- He's heading down that path. And, 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 I, and I don't want to, I don't want to just put it out there yet because of the fact that you never know. I mean, if you go back into the Giant history and some of the biggest busts that they have had, you know, the Giants have have stayed away a lot from free agency. They really have. The ones that I could think of up the top of my head is uh, Kenny Holmes. Kenny Holmes, the Giants wanted to replace uh, Cedric Jones. And uh, I think that year... Uh, I think yeah, your Simeon Rice got like a hundred million or wanted a hundred million dollar deal. Uh, so we brought in Kenny Holmes, give him five years, twenty million dollars. He did nothing. <laughs> he did nothing. And then I think of um, the the Detroit linebacker, um, and he actually played well for for a little bit, but he he was mainly injuries. Uh, it was Barrett Green? We gave him a truckload of money to come in here, and he did nothing. He did nothing as he, nothing either. And then I remember the the Eagle back in two thousand four, Carlos Emmons. We gave him 16 something million or 17 million. He pl- he missed 7 games in 15, 4 games in 16 and he he was just never this he was never the same player whatsoever. And then I know people will talk about one of the biggest ones. If you look at it contractual wise, one of the biggest ones was of course was LeVar Arrington. We gave him 7 years, 49 million dollars in 2006. He blew out his leg in Dallas and never played again. Now, am I saying that Kenny G is going to fit into the molds of one of these guys maybe? But we can't keep sitting here waiting around for Kenny G to figure it out. Contractually, we're stuck with this guy at least through the end of next year, depending on how much of a salary kit, uh, how, how much of a salary hit that Dable wants to, excuse me, Shane wants to take. I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? It's not looking good right now. Let's hope Sunday perks something up. For the subscriber that sent me the email about signing OBJ, uh, OBJ, like I said, he he got hurt in February. So we're looking at, what are, we, what are we, in August? So we're looking at six months removed from him getting hurt. So I, I'm not, he's probably another six months away, if even that. He wouldn't be an option to bring in this year, because if we did, we would have to bring him in more towards later in the season. But you know what? It's, it's, you always want to have that feel-good story. You always want to have those memories of OBJ. I still have the picture of OBJ and the catch hanging up in my office behind me next to my Malik Willis original print. So, I mean, I, you, you always want to have that. You always want to have hope, but I, I just I just don't see it. Yeah, we're going to be at the game on Sunday. It's going to be Mr. L, Mr. El Gigante. It's going to be LJ, the subscribers. We're going to have OGR Sports with us. We're going to have James Williams hanging out. We're going to have Dominic Palmer hanging out. We're going to be in the goal lot uh, about 4 o'clock before the game. And then we're going to head, head into the coaches club afterwards. So, you know what? If you're in the goal lot and you're looking around and you, you want to come say, hey, we're going to be in the goal lot right next to the Verizon entrance. 
I'll give some more details probably on Saturday, but come by, say hello. Love to see you, everyone. I know, so, I know a bunch of people said that they were going to the game, so that'll be fun. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giant Sports Talk Entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you subscribe, if you ring that by the end of means, that'd be awesome.